I absolutely love being able to have my say about issues. Now, what I'm going to say is actually what I call a view from the pew. I'm listening to several um, African American and other pastors talk to us, the people on the pew, about who we should vote for and who we should not vote for. I would like to go on camera and say this and be very, very definite about what I'm saying. I feel that the issues that you're asking me to vote for someone who is a proven immoral person, a proven person who is not mentally stable, but I feel I'm being pressured to vote for him because of two issues that he is putting before us that he will take care of for this country. One is the abortion issue, and the other is the um, LBGTQ and whatever initials that go with that. I said that I felt pressured for two reasons. When I finally put my finger on what the issue was, I felt like as a person with the microphone and with thousands, hundreds of thousands of people listening to the pastors, they have what we call a, a bully pulpit in, you know, in the world, but I'm just saying that they have the force, they have the people, they have the microphone, and they can say whatever they feel necessary to say to the masses, and that's a good thing. So I feel that the things that you're asking me to vote for someone for are issues that the church should have taken care of years ago. And because the people with the microphone did not handle it, they only handled it within small groups, within their church, within their group, instead of standing up and going broad and wide and coming out with a loud voice and sparing not, now you want me, as a person on the pew, to vote for a politician who's going to take care of those two issues. That is not a political issue. That's a church issue. We can vote for everything that we think we should not do. But those two issues are heart issues. And we should have taken care of that a long time ago from the pulpit. If you lead us, we'll go in that direction. I feel that I have a right to talk about this because I'm t over 40 years in the fashion business. And I guarantee you that is loaded with all kinds of creative people, artists. I, LGBTQ is not new to me. But I have so many friends that are in that community. But I'll tell you what, as a person on the pew, I have never wavered. I have never backed up. I have never backed off of God and his stance on those issues. So I'm feeling very um, pressured to, uh, and asking the question, why am I talking louder than the, the pastors and the people with the pulpits to those groups? I'm not afraid to say it out loudly. Why are you? All I'm doing is saying what God said. It's not my opinion. I'm telling you one thing. I'm not going to be pressured into voting for Donald Trump. You better take care of those issues, and you better get it done right. Ask the question. You stated that um, your opinion regarding the push to vote for Trump are there any policies or any specifics that you agree with on the uh, on with the Kamala Harris that is running for vice for president? Mm -hmm. uh, there are issues that Kamala Harris is presenting that I agree with. As a matter of fact, I voted for Joe Biden after coming out of a pandemic. I, I think, like a whole lot of people, I, I just wanted somebody who was seasoned and knew what to do because that was a traumatic time. Um, when I look at what's going on now, it's so much better than it was in 2020 because people were dying by the thousands. So when you compare the two, this is a time of exhaling. And sometimes we forget the atmosphere that preceded it. Um, so when I see Kamala Harris step forward, there are things that I agree with her on. Uh, first of all, as a, I call myself a staunch faith person, I agree that 
pro-life or is uh, pro-life is my decision but I think women should be able to have pro-choice and I know you might hear this often they say well even God gives you a choice I think a woman's body is so personal that the government has no business telling her what to do with her body that's between her her partner and God now I myself I'm against abortion but I think every woman has the right to decide between those three people, herself, God, and her doctor, her partner, what she wants to do and what she needs to do with her body. I do not believe that is the, a place for the government to go into those issues with someone, with something that intimate and that personal. As far as comma, and she is pro-choice, so I'm pro-choice, so I can agree with her on that. Um, and I think that the overall attitude of the church and what I'm hearing on the pew is that if I vote pro-choice, I'm voting against God and I'm killing the babies and, you know, and, and those, those are things that, um, that come up. I don't think that's a vote against God to say a woman should be able to choose what she needs to do. We don't always know the situation and the circumstance and the government and that's in that case when I see something that small happen I'm old enough to have been through um, people I know who um, had to get what we called uh, illegal abortions and they were those were not pretty sights so the women are going to do it one way or the other um, or do we want to go back to that time when I won't even go into to right now what that was like. Um, I don't believe in abortion as a means of birth control. <laughs> so I'll be clear about that. I think anytime a woman decides to have an abortion and you get pregnant anytime you want and you're not taking care of yourself, then you go and get an abortion to take care of it. I'm not for that. I told you I'm for pro-life. I'm pro-life. But I believe that you as a female have, should have a choice as to what you want to do because we don't know all of the situations. Only you and God know. Abortion. One other thing I'd like to say about the other question. Um, you did not ask me this, but it goes along with it. Why would I vote for Kamala instead of uh, voting for Trump, I think is the overall question. When I finally put my finger on it, I believe from what I'm hearing and noticing, now I'm an educated, I'm a very edu well-educated woman. I've sent three children to, um, to college. My husband's a very educated man. And I, uh, I have a sister even who is a family nurse practitioner. I have doctors in my family. And we're chatting. And this is at our own home. This is my vote. This is my opinion. I, from what I'm hearing and what I see about Donald Trump's body language, being a marketing and advertising person, I'm good with body language. Donald Trump is mentally, mentally unstable. So I ask myself, why would I want to put someone who I believe, this is my belief, is mentally unstable in charge of the world? That's my opinion. Okay. I also would like to say that um, on the other topic that seems to be the only two topics that the church is talking about is that um, when it comes to um, the sometimes I can't get the letters right LGBTQ <laughs> when it comes to that I, I alluded to the fact that I I work with a lot of people who were in um, alternative alternative lifestyles I was one of the artist or one of the people in the art industry who um, saw AIDS when it came along which was the first pandemic of its sort and I had uh, co-workers people that I worked with for years when you work with someone that becomes your family and even though they knew what I stood for there was still a uh, respect those those um, people who were working with me, they were um, 
they were my friends. They were my family. We had to depend on each other to get a, a, a campaign through. And we were just, we had respect for each other as people. So when I say things that I'm saying now, it's not that I'm what people call um, gay bashing or that kind of thing. But I will say this, when I saw so many of my friends passing from that horrible, horrible, horrible disease and situation, it, it broke my heart. It's like right, right now, I could hardly talk, talk about it without tears coming to my eyes. So if anyone is judging and saying, well, she's a, a, she's a homophobe or she doesn't like gay people, that's not the case. But I do know this for sure. I'll only say things that I know for sure. Many of them uh, were in that lifestyle because they told me that they were molested in church situations and youth groups as a child or as a teenager. Now, those kinds of things we don't talk about. We talk about the Catholic Church. That finally opened up and people found out what was going on. But when the church from the pulpit starts to tell me to vote for Donald Trump for something that needs to have a heart change, then we need to be about that. We need to be about uh, being a, a platform where people who are hurting can come and really experience change. Even though they were talking to me, they weren't, they weren't happy with what, with what was going on, but it was like they had made an adjustment. So I just wanted to go on record and not just say that to my friends in my living room because you're my friends and you're outside my house.